Very good morning, everyone, dear delegates. Thank you for joining the second edition of the world's largest fintech fest, Global Fintech Fest, organized by Internet and Mobile Association of India, along with its sister organizations, Payments Council of India and Fintech Convergence Council and National Payments Corporation of India. The fest is presented by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Reserve Bank of India and Government of India, and supported by Niti Aayog, Startup India and Invest India. We welcome you all for the keynote on fintech and innovation for the next half billion. Innovation in an in any sector is the greatest aspect and development, and it when and it comes to fintech, digital fintech innovations are creating positive consumer experience and are needed for the growth of the sector. Fintech innovations are helping reduce the cost of providing services, making it possible to reach more people and reducing the need for face-to-face -face interactions essential for keeping up economic activity during the pandemic. Without further delay, let me introduce the speakers for this interesting session. We have with us today, Sri Rajesh Bansal, the CEO RBI Innovation and Mrs. Suniti Nanda, the ex-Fintech officer, Government of Maharashtra. Let me hand it over to you, Mrs. Nanda, for moderating the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Swati. All right. Welcome, everyone. So the first session after inauguration, we all are very, very excited. As Swati actually mentioned, this is a huge platform. And this is in true terms. All key players in the Indian fintech community have come together. And they actually have partnered across the globe. So amazing anchoring role played by uh, Fintech Convergence Council here. And if you really see, this platform is a true example of collaboration, a collaboration for a specific purpose. To imagine a world where everyone shall have access to financial services in a seamless and cost-effective manner, the world really needs to collaborate beyond boundaries. We all understand it. Uh, and this is the time like, like uh, none other there. I still remember 10 years back, I used to carry a feature phone, used to go back, go to a bank for services, used to plan out for payment transfer, and always, always used to carry cash. Whenever like, you, know, you step out without cash, you never used to feel that, OK, what will happen kind of a thing. Currently, like you know, opening an account, doing a payment, or like you know, taking a loan, you I an mean, instant payment to BNPL, we actually have forgotten about cash. We can carry our bank in a small handheld device, whether it's a mobile or an iPad, you actually carry the bank in there. So it actually feels like we have, like the last 10 years, things have really changed. It's, it's a revolution that has happened in financial services for sure. And in India, like other key global markets, financial services actually had seen a lot of innovation. And thanks to uh, our regulator and the tech innovators and a lot of like, you know, uh, like you know, other ecosystem supporters, we have witnessed a lot of it. Currently, where we stand, it feels like we have a right. But if you really look at it closely, it feels like probably, uh, well, we may not be. There is a lot that is still to be done. And that's where this whole discussion for today is, and that's where we really look at uh, the innovation, uh, the RBIH team and Rajesh to really focus more on what is there, what next, what can be done to really cover the next half billion in India. So with that point, I think Rajesh, uh, over to you. We'll really love to hear from what is in store and how does the next uh, like uh, action looks like. And everyone is really looking at RBIH to like, you know, show us the next path. Thank you, Suniti, and thank you, everyone. I thanks the organizer for inviting me and giving me this chance because we are the latest baby of the Reserve Bank of India. We were formed a few months back, and I joined about four months back. So I am glad to get this platform, which is interestingly, you know, with hundreds and thousands of people joining in. So I'll dive straight into it in the interest of time. And as Suniti said, she provided a good background into how she doesn't need cash anymore, but we'll come to this in a moment. So as all of you know, that India's digital infrastructure is talked about around the world. So for the last five years, I've worked in a lot of African and Asian markets. And anywhere I walk in, they're like, oh, you are from India? 
oh, so you worked at India's ID system and everybody marveled, said what we have built. Agreed. But, but let's look at, you know, where we are. As you are aware, we have India's Aadhaar, the only country with 95% of people having a digital identity. We have built electronic KYC. We have built other pieces like UPI, which you know a lot of speakers are going to talk about, NPCI is going to talk about. So 1.2 billion people can open an instant bank account or any other account, and about 10 billion EKYC transactions have already happened. UPI, you know, 3.5 billion transaction last month. And DG Locker, which I use it all the time to show my vaccine certificate. I don't carry a vaccine, you know, certificate in print. I just use my DG Locker and carry everything I need. And the latest launch a few weeks ago of the account aggregator framework, which really leads to democratization of credit and democratization of finance. So these all the building pieces, no other country in the world has open digital infrastructure that India has. And as we all know, 43% of India's total population is active internet users. And we are expected to reach about 830 million smartphone users, which is all an opportunity. We have the lowest data rates in the world. We have telecom players coming out with cheapest, cheapest possible smartphones. And, and all of it, all the makings of success are there. And obviously for UPI, 81% of payments are P2P, you know, just the number which all of you know. And the Indian fintech story is, is something which everybody talks about. We are one of the most sought after markets for fintechs. One, because of the digital infrastructure that India brings as an enabler, as a foundation. And secondly, because of the middle class and, uh, and I would say about a billion possible users of fintechs. And that is why Indian fintechs are talked about. And it's expected that India's fintech market, currently valued at 31 billion, will grow to 84 billion at a CSGR of 22%. And we are all aware that during this year, there is barely a week when we don't read about one more unicorn from India. So valuation, there is no doubt we are we have arrived, the world is looking at us. The various, you know, fintechs which started way back in 2010 and now up to 2020, just, a, you know, from an India fintech report, gives you a sense of we have payments. So in my view, when I spent about 25 years at RBI in the world of payments, in my initial years, I used to do check processing in New Delhi. From there, we introduced electronic fund transfers in 1998. And from there, it gives me great pleasure to see that payments is, is everywhere. And then obviously there is lending marketplace, consumer lending, BNPL, which everybody talks about. And there are a lot of companies which are corporate VCs who are making an impact and the latest being new banks, uh, which are an embedded finance. But, and you would all appreciate valuation is one thing. Have we touched the lives of the last Indian? And we all know we haven't, but we have still have a long way to go. And what do we do to make that happen is the main theme of this keynote. And there are so many opportunities that exist out there, which are not yet tapped. So let's go into some of these. Internet users in India, obviously there is a urban rural divide, only 43% of rural and urban population are active internet users. And only 46% of the active internet users make digital payments. So you can do 46 into 43 into 100, you know the number you will arrive at is about 20% of the users are active, you know, internet users who make digital payments. Some of you might have seen the new Pulse published by PhonePay, which gives us real insights into how India is transacting digitally, which are the top states, what are the key use cases for which people, you know, use UPI and, and other payment mechanisms. But 
you know, Suniti did mention that cash to GD, uh, that she barely carries cash. And I'm in Bangalore now, and I meet any of the founders of big fintechs. They tell me, hey, Rajesh, I don't carry cash. Then the question to ourselves is, if we don't carry cash, why is India's cash to GDP ratio at 14.7%, one of the highest in the world, while in most of the OECD countries, it's below 5%. And that's the holy grail I call, I tell myself, as somebody who taught payment systems about 15 years back at the RBI Academy, we have achieved a lot, but the fact is our cash to GDP ratio still is very, very high. That tells us that there is a lot more to be done in terms of digitizing our payments, not just retail, but B2B and everything else. And there is a lot that needs to be done. A lot of opportunities for the fintechs to go to that route. Here comes, you know, what is RBI Edge? A lot of people haven't heard about us. They wonder who we are, are we a department, who, and what's our role in the ecosystem? So I'm taking this opportunity to talk about our role in the ecosystem. We all know, as I spoke about, the fintech banks, other, you know, account aggregator, UPI, and other parties. Where do we come in? And obviously, there's a regulator, RBI. We come in to make this fit into this puzzle and ensure success for all. We want to create a shared vision among all the entities, including banks, fintechs, tech companies, academics. I'll come to that in a minute. So we try and fulfill this puzzle and make it a whole. And what are the four key mission, you know, pillars of our mission? We want to, if you look at the bottom right, suitable financial products. As most of you might agree that we haven't been able to deliver the suitable financial products to large cohorts of population whether it's, you know, 100 million farmers, whether it's the dairy farmers, whether it's micro and MSMEs, a lot of work is being done, you know, in collaboration with fintechs and banks, but still a lot of it remains to be done. Second big pillar is affordable. And I heard, you know, my former boss, Kiri Padmanabhan speak about affordability. So we are looking at the right affordable products with a great consumer experience. I want to spend 30 seconds on it. You know, as a user of a number of payment apps, I am never in awe of, oh wow, this is how it should be. The way we feel an Apple phone or some other products do. I've worked with inclusive fintechs in Africa. Some of them really have that wow experience, which is so intuitive. Have we served the consumer the same way? Have we ensured that a smartphone digital savvy consumer can do single click experience? No. And I have done some, you know, studies on the May, about 20 main banking apps, as well as, you know, the payment apps to see how good that customer experience is and what can we do to work with all of you to take it to the next level. And lastly, but not the least, how do we ensure secure manner in which all of this happens. And, and I'm looking at building what we call as a trust stack of which cybersecurity is one aspect. And there are a lot of other things which we are looking at, but I will be reaching out to a lot of you to look at how do we build that. And this is where we come in. We are going to be, we want to be the, the force multiplier. And as I said, create a shared vision working with all of you. The regulators, obviously, the domain experts, incubators, VC investors, industry associations, and everyone. And look at three pillars of innovation. The process innovation, as I said, there is too much friction in the system. How do we reduce process innovation? One of the recent studies I came across told me that on an average, it takes 15 to 35 days to get a loan of 2 lakh rupees. This is about $3,000 phone, I mean $3,000 loan. So what are we doing? I mean, why does it have to take so long? Then the product innovation, which I have already alluded to. And lastly, but not the least, is policy innovation, proactive policy innovation by the regulators. 
And what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve using data to create better financial products, which account aggregator is one of the important things. And there is also a discussion on how do we do assisted account aggregator mode for the next half billion. So that's a good conversation to have with some of you. And what else do we want? We want instant credit, not just for digital savvy millennials, but also for that farmer out there in, in remote Tamil Nadu who can potentially get instant credit. And I am already working on a proof of concept with a, you know, talking to some of the state governments. How do we ensure instant credit is possible uh, the way it is possible for you and me? And obviously tailored investment products, affordable insurance products, and you know, the next half billion should be able to access what the 500 billion, 500 million of us can do easily. And the next half billion obviously is 500 million first time internet users. And with this, I learned, give you, giving you some sense of opportunities. We realized there are 770 million dairy farmers in India. Have we looked at their financial flows and looked at what are the best financial product for them? Still a long way to go. Interestingly, you would wonder what is this 80 million PMUI? This is the Ujwala scheme of the government of India. There is an opportunity of $3 billion of micro loans that exist there. I've already spoken to some of the oil companies. Then obviously all of you know about MSMEs, uh, where there's a lot of opportunity. And then obviously PM Kisan has 111 million enrolled beneficiary. There are 7 to 5, 7.2 million self-help groups with the NRLM, what do we do? How do we ensure that there is a digital footprint for the SHGs, which we can leverage to provide them other financial services? And one of the key thing is to look at how do we create an equal world while benefiting every stakeholder, whether the investors, the fintechs, and the consumers, and ensure that there is gender parity in accessing various services. So with this, Sunidhi, I'll stop. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Rajesh. There's a lot of information and can actually see a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, since you were just talking about it and I could see a few questions coming around that, uh, it, the last few slides which are about opportunities, that's the most interesting part. And we actually have seen a lot of discussions even in the past, even the ecosystem had asked for uh, like, you know, whether it's a PM Kisan or it is a, like no Jola scheme. There is already a lot of data set pertaining to that next half billion, which is out there where government is involved in various such schemes. But then, uh, I mean, when it comes to the ecosystem and this is something that had happened in the past when ecosystem people had approached uh, various like, you know, government entities, that is there a way that the collaboration can happen where such kind of data set can be leveraged with like you know following the right kind of uh, data privacy norms then a lot can happen i mean these are those people who are not there in credit bureau uh, database yeah, yeah. but then there is good information which is sitting there but then this is very you know like different states have different set of database central government have a different set of database so anything that you see anything that you believe that like from a innovation standpoint from a rbs standpoint if, if something can be done in bringing it all together, do you see that that's happening in the uh, foreseeable future? Sure. So, Suniti, that's where, if you ask me, my role comes in. We become the glue and we talk to the state government, the central, so federal government, the central government, so to say, and, and the fintechs and the banks, that how do we enable these data sets and what I call as build an agri stack, to, because there are so many interventions by the government as far as input subsidies are concerned and having built the DVD of the country, I'm aware of what the challenges are sometimes. And right. that's the real opportunity for the fintechs to leverage the data sets, as you said, in the right, with the right framework. And that's why I'm here. That's why RBS is there. Awesome. Now you have actually raised hopes. So for sure, there's, I'm, I'm hoping to see a lot of more. So a related question that has come. Uh, so, so somebody has mentioned that it's good to see RBI bring this hub. And can we expect more collaboration with partners, stakeholders? I think the examples that they have mentioned is set up innovation centers across countries where innovators can actually reach for help, 
suggestions, call for hackathons idea. I think more of like, you know, how the ecosystem can reach out to you because people understand opportunity, but uh, how they can reach out to whether Rajesh or they can reach out to RBI through RBI H, whatever is the plan, if yeah. you can mention that will help. Yeah. So thanks. No, this is a good uh, point. Somebody has brought up that one is, as I clearly stated in my presentation, we we are not our law to ourselves that we'll say, hey, you know, we will build everything. We are just an enabler. And as you see, sitting in the middle, bringing all of you together. Having said that, enough opportunities. I gave some examples. I'll give you the email right away. CEO at rbihub.in. Please feel free to reach out. We have a LinkedIn, Twitter. I have my own Twitter and LinkedIn handle. I can assure you I answer most of the LinkedIn messages myself and not my team. I don't even have a big team. So I'm assuring you, send an email. We'll be more than happy to collaborate to do proof of concepts, pilots of some of the things which I mentioned. It's my pleasure to do that. Cool. That's great, Rajesh. Uh, great that you have not shared your mobile number. Otherwise, you would have bombarded with... Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I <laughs> But email, I assure you, you know, I have learned a reply will come and we'll set up calls if required. That's a great start. That's it. Just like, you know, just extended question. Uh, are there any plans that RBH is doing to like, you know, set up localized centers or something like, you know, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, Hyderabad, mm -hmm. something like that? So, as I said, I'm based out of Bangalore, which is our main office. Uh, still setting it up, but we are nearly there. In the, in the FinTech hub, HSR layout. And I will have a smaller office in Bombay as of now. That's the plan. And the smaller office in Bombay will, you know, it will be easier for all of you to reach out, especially, uh, you know, FCC and everybody. Uh, yeah. So I'll have my chief partnership sit out of there and a smaller team. Yeah, if I, if I just put in my earlier hat, I'll say, oh, why did you leave Mumbai? Why are you at Bangalore in case you... Not a reason, I can't discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, very, very, very apt. Very apt. But uh, do, I mean, definitely it does look like, like, you know, the way fintech ecosystem is coming up there in Delhi or Hyderabad and even, like, you know, a lot of year two cities. As long as you have, a, like, you know, good plan to engage with that uh, extended ecosystem, knowing that it's all digital and you are reachable and you have put in a team to really respond to, I think that will really... Yeah, so I'll say. maybe just rehydrate. Physical location doesn't matter, as Sunil right. said. Wherever you are, whether you are in Assam or a Chhattisgarh, we are always there to support you and work right. with you to see that we eventually succeed. But I'll just add one more point. I was a little faster looking at the watch, but maybe I have a few minutes. Sure. So my purpose is to not just work with the existing fintechs and the banks doing a great job and they know best what is to be done but also look at how do we build fintechs for localized solutions possibly you know i always give the example of chhattisgarh so young smart girls of chhattisgarh know what the problems of finance for women in chhattisgarh is right they know best but they don't have the right wherewithal the right you know what should i say the right you know, connection, the right investment, the right VC investments and everything to be able to, you know, yeah, Oops, sorry. <laughs> That's yeah. probably your alarm going up. Yeah, right. Right. sorry about that. So look at, you know, enabling people who have bright ideas, but do not have the right wherewithal right. To, to bring them into the fintech space and create what I call inclusive fintechs focused on the next are billion solutions. Awesome. Awesome. And that's, I think that's the call of the hour. Uh, I'll just pick up another question that's there in the platform. If you want to like, you know, touch upon so the few people who have been asking, like, you know, how RBI is planning to leverage innovative solutions on blockchain. I believe there are a few things that was happening. Anything you would like to share? Yeah. So could somebody ask me, I didn't want to talk about emerging technologies when PPD, but blockchain and DLT, I've already spoken to, you know, speak to a, spoken to a number of tech companies, number of banks that how, what are the pain points which DLT and blockchain can solve in India? So for those of you who are really interested, read up a latest case study on Italian Banking Association. They have moved all of their interbank reconciliation to blockchain. 
and honestly they do tens of millions of transactions every year so that's very encouraging apart from just pocs which i've heard about so we plan to work with you know as you might know i have a my cto he comes from a state bank of india so he has great experience and amit is working on some of these initiatives how could we actually leverage dld in blockchain for large scale implementation in india to solve a real pain point yeah right 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 that's good i'm sure like you know these are things uh, we might actually see next as a part of the sandbox i know there are a lot of things that rbi is doing as part of sandbox uh, so i understand rajesh that it's still not under rbi commit but anything that you would like to uh, mention like you know how uh, all these things can come together and specifically if you can mention and this is a question that used to come earlier that like you know the innovation doesn't happen in silo so there could be like you no know, things where we have to integrate in a sense can cut across multiple uh, regulators if need be uh, is it something that that's in the in the cards in future so so if you notice my you know ecosystem your slide it clearly focuses on the fact that we plan to work with all the other regulators in india to see how do we uh, you know create or reduce frictions which could be cross cutting which could be horizontal in nature so right. already you know going to speak to sebi irda pfrda and including you know a small project which i have started on ckyc because obviously there is a lot of inter regulator you know coordination that will be required so i am on it definitely okay. cool i know there are just few minutes left just the last question if you would like to take up and this is like you know of sure. my own interest in a sense uh, whenever it comes to like you know innovation research in some of the other markets we have seen that there is a lot of like you know very close collaboration happens with uh, the academic ecosystem uh, i mean i know like uh, the hyderabad setup rbi rbi academy there is like you know, a lot of things that happens in that direction but how much are we leveraging more from fintech innovation standpoint if there is a you would like to throw some light on that that would be great yeah so if you notice my board my board has three professors you know yeah. uh, one who's mr junjun wala who chairs all of you know it research park mr uh, janki uh, mr sorry the idrbt director uh, mr janki ram who's 30 years at iit and mr krishna murthy chief research scientist at indian institute of science so that will give you a sense and i am already speaking to number of iits iims how can we collaborate so it's a mutual win win and obviously going to talk to a lot of international academics as well to see how we can learn and also speaking to some other global innovation hubs already to see what can we learn from each other and the interesting thing was most of them i have spoken to they are also trying to find their feet on how to go about it so it's a good learning the market structure is different but you know it's good to learn from each other and that's the plan i'm sure i'm sure and it's good to see that our artist rajesh you are driving this and we would really look at seeing rbi uh, taking the leap and driving things not just for india but rather like you know set the trend for the globe to really follow us through so whenever it comes to innovation whenever it comes to like you know anything related to uh, this sector rbi has always been in the forefront i mean like a big fan of it rbi h is the best thing that like you know can happen in such kind of a time and bringing rajesh is probably like you know one of the uh, one of the great stuff and looking forward to really interact further i'm sure the ecosystem is equally excited to really interact and look for the opportunities so with that thank you so much rajesh for your time and uh, thank you uh, fcc for a great session probably i'll give it back to swati with just uh, one minute left so thank you so much sunidhi and thank you so much the gfa organizing team for having me here thank you thank you thank you so very much uh, ma'am and sir for making this possible and being a part of uh, our event uh thank you each one of you all to uh, join us today and have a great great day to head thank you so much bye bye